friend Kelsey Horn owns a bookstore in L.A. Her customers come from all over the world. Most of them seem as mysterious as Kelsey, whose past is as easy to trace as smoke. It seems almost impossible, living in a world of four billion people, but it happens. Being somewhere far away from home, and yet seeing someone you know, or think you know. Kelsey's referral was a woman named Catherine, and Kelsey had sent her to me because her story needed an ending, or in Catherine's case, maybe a beginning. I think she's from Romania, darling. At least that's what the dialectician told them after charging them heaven knows how much for an hour's conversation with her. Bucharest, he said, <laughs> wanting to give them their money's worth, I would think. And how long was she in the hospital? One month in a coma, three months recuperating. She's been on her own for a year. Still no memories at all? They tried everything. Hypnotists, therapists, medical doctors, all without success. They checked missing. Persons, bureaus, fingerprint records, immigration, European police. Who named her Catherine? She did. Why? In the hospital. She watched a movie with Tracy and Hepburn. She loved them both, but didn't think Spencer was appropriate. <laughs> I like her. So a year after she's released from the hospital, she finds herself in your bookstore and sees a man that looks familiar? Mm-hmm. You know, it took her almost a week to work up the nerve to approach me and ask him. What did you tell her? I'll call you, darling. I don't know anything about this young woman, except what she told me. Is her story true? All of it? Part of it? Any of it? Now, the man that she thought was familiar is a friend of mine. You know, old habits really do die hard, Veronica. I'm still inclined to be ferociously bright. Is this man someone she might have known? I have no idea. You'll have to ask him, if he's willing to talk to you. Is your friend as private as you, Kelsey? Oh, no. Much more. Catherine's apartment was close enough to the ocean to be cooled by it, but far enough away to be affordable. She seemed as lonely as a widow on Valentine's Day. Catherine had lived in her apartment for a year, and it was still as impersonal as a motel room. But that made a sorry kind of sense. If you really don't know who you are, if you have no history, or opinions, or even likes or dislikes that you've acquired during a life of experience, how do you begin to decorate your environment? Whose pictures go on the mantle? How do you even pick up the clothes you need to wear? I have no memory of this either. This was also a part of my old life. My new life began June 17th when I came out of the coma. By that time, I didn't look so bad. I'd had a month to heal. Now, I'm just one year old, and I probably look no better or worse than I ever did. But I can't prove it, can I? I have no pictures older than me. Where did they find you? A hotel room a few miles from here with one of the cleaning women found me in the morning. The doctor said I'd been beaten up 12 hours before. His name was on the register? R. Smith. No one remembered seeing you come in? No. No one could even remember R. Smith. What can you tell me about the man in the bookstore? He was the first face I've seen in a year that looked at all familiar. Tell me, what does that feel like, Catherine? Just someone with no memory. on the brain. A tingle. It's more physical than anything else. Or maybe it's just a trick of the mind. Like someone who loses a hand or a leg, but can sometimes still feel their fingers or toes. If I could just meet this man, or someone could, even for a minute, just long enough to ask him if he remembers me, maybe his answer will be yes. 